What's up, Key Issues? Garrick here, and welcome to today's video where we'll be taking a look at one of the most powerful beings that we've ever seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The once and former King of Asgard, the sharpest dresser in the Nine Realms, and lastly, and most importantly, the Allfather, Odin. I'm of the belief that if Thanos had tried that Infinity Gauntlet shit while Odin was in his prime, he would have stopped him as soon as Thanos got anywhere near the Nine Realms. That's how ridiculous Odin was in his heyday. Hey! You're unworthy! Now, we haven't seen any prime Odin in action, but we have heard stories and we've seen the respect that even the most powerful characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe have for the Allfather. I'm not as strong as you. No. You're stronger. As we've done with multiple other How Powerful Is This Character videos, we're going to start with his strength, speed, and durability, then move on to his equipment, and of course detail the extraordinary power of the Odin Force. Being Asgardian, Odin is naturally imbued with superhuman strength, speed, and durability, but Odin is not your typical Asgardian. Take these superhuman abilities and amp them all the way up to 11, and then we can begin to scratch the surface of Odin's immense strength. Since he was a child, Odin had been waging war throughout the Nine Realms, laying waste to kingdoms, slaying great beasts, and dominating entire realms. During this time, he faced off against the fire demon, Surtur, who was prophesied to bring Ragnarok and the end of Asgard. Hoping to prevent Ragnarok, Odin defeated Surtur and stole his eternal flame to be locked away within Asgard for the remainder of eternity. This is one of Odin's, if not Odin's, greatest feat, and I think it deserves a closer look. With his eternal flame, Surtur was destined to destroy Asgard, as I said, during the event of Ragnarok, and try as they might, Thor, Hulk, Valkyrie, and even Hela couldn't hope to stop him. Thor, Hulk, and Valkyrie couldn't even come close to Hela in combat. She was one of the strongest beings in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we've ever seen, and Surtur destroyed her almost instantaneously. The Hulk, famed to be one of the strongest to ever live, someone who can fight on even footing with awakened Thor and defeated Fenris, was nothing but a minor inconvenience to Surtur, and Odin defeated the Demon King of Muspelheim by himself. That's power on a scale that we have never seen in action. After his firstborn daughter, Hela grew to be of age, they went around conquering and uniting the Nine Realms under Odin's violent banner. You know, just father and daughter stuff. However, Odin later realized that true peace could not be attained through violence, so he abandoned his military crusade, but Hela grew too ambitious and sought to take Odin's power by force. So he was forced to defeat his own daughter and imprison her in Hell, a feat that required so much power that he needed to create a lock out of his own life force to keep her imprisoned. Hela draws her power directly from Asgard, meaning that as long as Asgard is standing, she's essentially a bottomless pit of power, much like Superman has bottomless power as long as he's near a yellow sun, and I don't think this needs repeating, but again, Odin was able to defeat and imprison her as well as Fenris all by himself. Not even a feat that the combined powers of Thor, Valkyrie, and Hulk could do. After banishing Hela, the Nine Realms lived in peace until the Frost Giants attacked Midgard, planning to enslave the human race. There, Odin took on Laufey, the king of the Frost Giants, in single combat, forcing the Frost Giants into submission and into a peace treaty with Asgard. Now you might be thinking, but Garrick... Odin had his whole army in Jotunheim, and he lost his eyeball battling Laufey, so how strong could he possibly be? And to that I say, yeah, so what? He looks way cooler now, and chicks dig scars. Right, Frigga? Frig- oh, wait. Too soon. Now, I don't want to discount Laufey's power at all. We all know he was ultimately killed by Loki in a relatively lackluster way. He was blasted in the back by Odin's legendary Gungnir. So, 
Not only was he killed by a weapon channeling the Odin Force, but he was killed with his back turned and not expecting to be attacked. In his prime, Laufey controlled the Casket of Ancient Winters, which granted him an enormous power boost as well as the ability to control ice. This power alone almost plunged the Earth into a new Ice Age. The relic was powerful enough to lay waste to entire armies, but Odin and his army were able to slap it down like a snow cone maker. Additionally, I want to circle back to Hela for just a second. When Hela was in Odin's trophy room, she passed by the casket of ancient winters and proclaimed that it was weak. The casket was strong enough to destroy entire armies and realms, and she was barely considering it a threat. Now, just for a second, try to remember that Odin defeated her as well as Laufey. Man, Odin is such a badass, but we're not even close to done. After the birth of his son, Thor, Odin presides over the Nine Realms as its protector. Basically, his power is so absolute that no one out there is willing to disrupt the peace. You know, until Thor, being a warmonger and thirsty for battle, starts a war with Jotunheim. Of course, Thor and the boys are about to be destroyed until Odin comes down to save his sons and their friends. During this time, Laufey claims that Odin looks very weary in his old age, and trying to take advantage of this, Laufey attempts to attack Odin, but is immediately sent flying by the power of Odin simply summoning the Bifrost. Literally, Odin flexed so hard on Laufey that he got rocked back down to the ground. Now, you may want to attribute this feat to the Bifrost, but I'm certainly not going to. We've seen the Bifrost be summoned many, many times before, and it's never admitted a force powerful enough to send enemies flying, let alone a being as powerful as Laufey. That, and Odin, who is about to enter the Odin sleep. Oh, Rick, I was asleep. I was having a little Morty sleep. But, I mean, Laufey was right. Odin was weary, he was weak, and he was about to enter the Odin sleep. Despite all of this, he was able to send a Laufey flying and teleport everyone safely back to Asgard. As for speed and durability feats, we don't really have many, actually we don't have any at all to go off of specifically, but it's safe to say that he's far faster and more durable than the opponents he's defeated, like Surtur, Laufey, and Hela. Surtur, who had taken full force punches from the Hulk and shrugged them off like it was nothing, as well as the blades from Hela, which were just a minor inconvenience. He has been wounded in combat before during the war to save humanity from the Frost Giants, like I said, but at that time, Odin was a proponent of peace and wanted to avoid killing or even fighting, for that matter. The wound suffered at the hands of Laufey is likely an outlier used to tell the story of his iconic eye patch. Now, I know I've mentioned some of it before, but let's get into his equipment and weaponry. Odin wields Gungnir, which is an immensely powerful magical spear held by the kings of Asgard, which was passed down to Odin by his father, Bor, who used the weapon to defeat Malekith and the Dark Elves in battle. Gungnir was forged from Asgardian metals and carries many enchantments that amplify its powers, much like the enchantment put on Mjolnir. One of these enchantments gives the wielder of the spear control of the destroyer, and while Gungnir is most effective in Odin's hands, it can be wielded in combat by others such as Loki and Thor. Although you could argue that the spear carries an enchantment that allows it to only be used by the current king of Asgard, as Loki was acting king when he used it, and Thor was the rightful king when he used it against Hela. Besides his legendary weapon, Odin has his faithful steed, Sleipnir, a mystical eight-legged Asgardian horse which Odin used as his mount in battles for thousands and thousands of years, as well as Hugin and Munin, Odin's ravens which he uses to spy on the events happening throughout the realms. But finally, we're going to talk about what you all want to hear about, Odin's most well-known ability, the Odin Force. The Odin Force is an insanely powerful mystical slash magical energy used by the kings of Asgard, most notably Odin, hence the name. It is the source of power of the spear Gungnir as well as the destroyer, and must periodically be replenished by entering the Odin sleep, but we'll get into that in a second. 
The power of the Odin Force is nearly limitless, and while wielding it, Odin is granted power and authority over lesser Asgardians, including his son, Thor. The Odin Force is what allowed Odin the ability to strip Thor of his godhood and banish him to Midgard, as well as imprison Hela in Hell for thousands of years via the lock bound to his life force. Additionally, the Odin Force grants him power over dark magic, shown when he was able to teleport Thor to Midgard during the first Avengers despite the destruction of the Rainbow Bridge. And finally, the Odin Force allows Odin to transmute and manipulate matter itself. The limits of this ability are nearly limitless. I mean, there's almost nothing that Odin can't do with the Odin Force. However, this immeasurable power comes with a cost known as the Odin Sleep. Odin is often required to enter a state of deep slumber to recharge his energies, being left vulnerable as a mortal during the process. The Odin Sleep's duration typically varies and tends to depend on Odin's physical and mental state. Sometimes it lasts just a single night, while other times it lasts over weeks or months, but even while in this state, Odin still remains fully aware of his surroundings as he's able to sense the events across the Nine Realms. So that's the breakdown of the immense power of Odin from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Remember to like and subscribe, it does really, really help us out. Also, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that's going to be in the link below. Remember the motto, it's comics over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.